good evening friends i'm sure you guys are enjoying the um the cssd sessions and the sterilization and disinfection of instruments i'm very very happy uh, happy to be part of this entire event today so i'm just taking you through one quick uh, slide on this to say how are these paradigms are myths formed this is an experiment that a scientist did with five monkeys and a, and bananas kept on a ladder okay he kept uh, these bananas on the ladder and uh, if any one of these monkeys would go up uh, to pick the banana uh, cold very very cold uh, water used to be showered on all the other monkeys which were down so what they would do is beat up any monkey that go on to the ladder to pick the bananas right so slowly the scientist replaced one of the monkeys with the the, the five which already knew who never went up because they know if any one of them walk up to the bananas they would be showered with water so none of them picked the bananas so this new monkey did not know anything about this but went up to take the bananas and there was no cold water there is no showers there was no punishment given whatsoever but all other monkeys bet the new monkey and never uh, allowed it to go on top now slowly all other monkeys were also replaced no monkeys knew why this was happening but none of them would go up uh, to pick up the bananas here that is how myths are formed i guess right and it's easy to form myths and it gets uh, it gets moved on to generations but it takes lots of science lots of efforts uh, evidence and best practices and implementation of the same and evidences of those practices uh, to break these uh, myths and so you need some strong um, uh, people to break these myths and you need myth busters who are very very strong so it's my pleasure to invite our next speaker now dr apurb shastri he's a good friend of mine an amazing amazing academician and um, a fantastic teacher Uh, like i always say it's important that um, uh, in adult learning it's important to unlearn and relearn every day whatever is not uh, existing today you need to unlearn and relearn and uh, that is something that is important in this particular topic as well he is the associate professor at uh, jipma and he is also the infection control officer he is uh, he leads the antimicrobial stewardship team he has been trained in antimicrobial stewardship clinical research he has also done his dnb but uh, what is he popular for is also the number of uh, books that he has written that's been followed by lots and lots of students across the country and he has nine uh, books and uh, editions to his public uh, to his credit and he has also published lots of books and he is also the external peer reviewer for national guideline that is the ncdc guideline which was released in 2019 and also i think the 2020 also then the external peer reviewer for also the um, the um environmental cleaning guideline that was uh, released by cdc and he has uh, he has uh, lots of lots of uh, other areas of interest as well and it's it's an absolute absolute pleasure for me to invite dr apur Hello, yes so i'm going to shoot out some myths and i would want you to bust them if you can all right and you please help us bust these myths that we have uh, we have uh, you know uh, taken up for for years and we've been following a lot of things okay for simple question just to start with uh, this uh, tssu or theater sterile supplies uh, department right uh, can they be used as an alternative to cssd yeah so this tssu is uh, again they say that it is it is only meant for those places w- uh, which is a very large hospital uh, i mean uh, segmented hospital where they have a uh, multiple buildings so in such case decentralized tssu is allowed otherwise in general uh, situation it is recommended not to have a tssu okay however okay. however okay. our general practice is like uh, uh, like the surgeons or the healthcare workers they find it very very easy if the tssu is uh, located uh, next to the operation theater but it is found that most often the tssu are mismanaged so tssu uh, should be uh, kept only when it is essential that is when uh, you have a big large hospital then you can keep the tssu but the tssu has to be under 
the guidance of CS system. All right. Under the direct supervision of CS system, it cannot function uh, separately. You can't have two different bodies. Fine. So it's not an alternative to CSSD, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. It is. Okay, it is. they will have to work hand hand in hand to help the entire system in sterilizing, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. Cleaning at CSSD is not required if pre-cleaning is performed adequately at the point of use and if the sterilization method used is efficient. So this is again uh, one of the commonest uh, myth what uh, is been followed everywhere. So the CSSD staff, if the if the workload is too much, then they then they come with this excuse that is already pre-cleaned in the house in the uh, at source. Then uh, then why the cleaning is required? But here I I would like to tell that this pre-cleaning at source, at source, if you do pre-cleaning, the meaning of that is it it will only uh, remove the gross soil. It will remove the gross soil from the instrument by uh, by wiping. Uh, so that it will prevent drying. The aim is to uh, prevent the drying step. It can be done by uh, soaking or spraying of the instrument with uh, some of the enzymatic uh, solution. However, it should not be considered that as a standalone practice to replace cleaning at CSSD. Cleaning of CSSD is, is a mandate process which cannot be replaced by pre-cleaning at the at the point of source the uh, yeah, one of the that. here they say that the disinfectant solution is not used here in the okay. pre cleaning step the disinfected uh, solution is not used and uh, so it is very very uh, risky if we skip the pre cleaning uh, i mean uh, the cleaning step so i don't recommend that uh, cleaning uh, should not happen if pre cleaning is already done Okay, it's not your recommendation. Does the guideline also say that? Yes. Or or um or research also say that? Uh, the CDC guideline <laughs> clearly says that pre-cleaning cannot replace uh, cleaning. It has to be that both uh, both are important. They help each other uh, uh, in a way that they will uh, support each other in order to achieve the uh, decontamination. Excellent. So that means uh, CDC it clearly gives us a guideline on this particular aspect, isn't it? Yes. So that's the third thing that I, I had the third third myth that I wanted you to address. That is, a, a facility should keep the instruments dry. That means you should just keep it, not even clean. Forget about cleaning. Just bring it as such. Give it to the CSST. Um, if immediate uh, clear, even terminal cleaning is not done, you just don't clean anything. Just bring it down and leave it there. Is it okay? You're telling about dry drying, yeah, equipment, right? So yes, yes. Uh, if you after the surgery is done if you dry the equipment without uh, uh, moistening the equipment then this leads to deposition of the soil or uh, deposition of the soil especially the blood or maybe the debris all this will get uh, deposited over the equipment over the creases of the of the equipment as a result what will happen is uh, once it gets dried, it is very, very difficult to uh, remove the dried uh, items from the uh, from the equipment. So it is always advisable. I mean, the uh, recommendation from both CDC and WHO is very, very clear that any equipment after the surgery is over, you, you have to start the pre-cleaning step as soon as possible. Uh, preferably within 30 minutes of the surgery. However, okay. however, in, in some situation where the pre-cleaning is not performed or, or there is a delay, this terminology is called as DHT or decontamination holding time. Correct. If you have a delay, then if you have a decontamination holding time, if you want to apply, then in such case, they say that at least you have to at least you have to moist the equipment. Moistening of the equipment is very, very important. You, uh, you cannot keep the equipment dry. Okay, there are uh, various ways the moistening can happen. Wet towel, uh, use of wet towel has been uh, used uh, as an ancient practice. This is uh, good if you have a holding time of uh, one hour, uh, short holding time. If you have a 
longer holding uh, period then you can use various other methods like spray on detergent to uh, break down the um, blood uh, present in the uh, over the surface of the equipment or maybe self sieved pouches okay all right self uh, pouches are available which can also be <clears throat> okay so uh, another another myth so you could use uh, reusable woven fabrics or linen that can be used for packing items for eto plasma or even sometimes dry heat is that is that a myth or is it a practice linen or these are also called as the woven fabrics these are i i mean i can say that the government hospitals most commonly use uh, packing material in jipmer also we have a lot of uh, linen uh, material we use for packing this is uh, recommended i mean it is acceptable when you use steam sterilizer the cscc guideline of who clearly says steam sterilization it is fine you you uh, you can use it but it is not recommended for other sterilization uh, process like etos plasma sterilization as well as dry heat sterilization okay so one more thing i want to add here ma'am the inspection of the linen is very very important uh, before we use because prior to each use the linen has to be inspected uh, properly for the presence of hole or any uh, any uh, stains are there any any uh, deposits are there uh, sometimes the linens may have holes so those things have to be very very uh, i mean the the person who is uh, packing he has to be very keen to inspect the linen uh, properly double wrapping is another important thing which is uh, uh, recommended when we use the uh, linen all right thank you so much uh, dr apur let's move on to the next one these peel pouches when loaded you no know, side by side in a, a sterilizer can you just quickly tell us is it all right to have plastic side one pouch one pouch should face only the plastic side and the paper should face the plastic on, paper only is something like that uh, ma'am it, again it is uh, depends upon how fast uh, 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 the uh, uh, the conduction happens and uh, peel pouches the guideline says that the plastic side of one pouch okay if uh, this is a pouch and this is the uh, plastic side and this is the paper side then yes. this the plastic side of one pouch should face the paper side of the other pouch correct okay this is okay so if this is yeah. the paper Side and this is the plastic side. Then the plastic side of one pouch should place on uh, should face the paper side of the other pouch. This is for the air and steam to pass uh, uniformly through the paper side because the paper side will allow the air and steam to pass uh, better than the plastic side. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. It's advisable to place horizontally uh, like this. The uh, this is a wrong method. You should always uh, place it uh, vertical. Stack. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so you stack it vertically paper plastic paper plastic goes on like that isn't it yeah fine so let's move on to the next one in solid bar ceiling is solid bar ceiling better than triple bar ceiling a uh, ceiling is of two type one is triple bar ceiling like this and the other one is solid bar uh, ceiling like this okay so yes. they say that uh, both are uh, both are been used in in cscd but triple bar ceiling is considered to be a better method uh, because the i mean the breakage here is lesser than the solid bar uh, uh, seals because the solid bar seals it may happen that at 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 times there may be a breakage okay. okay at times there may be a breakage like this triple bar ceiling there should be one seal which should be complete without any break uh, that is the rule what has been uh, followed break i mean if you have three uh, seals like that then at least one row should be there which should be complete without any break perfect perfect moving on again yeah that was fantastic that uh, that the diagram also was really really good yeah so uh, this flash outer clays are best for quick sterilization in the theater isn't it so can they be used as a as an alternative for sterilization itself 
again this is excuse what uh, usually the uh, uh, the surgical team they take flash sterilization is a method where immediately or uh, during the surgery if some equipment will fall down and you don't have any alternate for, for the uh, for the equipment only in those emergency uh, situation it is uh, recommended to use flash uh, sterilization this is also called as iuss or immediate use uh, system uh, sterilizer this is used uh, this is recommended only for the emergency use only for those equipment which uh, which will fall down or uh, during the surgery you want to use the equipment uh, there is no other alternative is available here a quick sterilization of 134 degree centigrade for 3 to uh, uh, 10 minute is done and here the problem is here we are we are using the equipment in a wet condition because after the sterilization is over we are not giving the equipment to get dry then use so we are using the equipment in the uh, wet condition uh, this is one drawback so there is a chance of recontamination uh, because of this and another drawback is here no packing is performed no packing no pre cleaning no cleaning directly the sterilization happens so so uh, because there is no cleaning pre cleaning and packing so there is a chance of recontamination uh, there is a chance of uh, i mean breach of maybe maybe uh, maybe possible so recommendation is this flash sterilization only for emergency uh, uh, purpose not for our uh, regular use okay quickly into eto is eto banned yes or no eto is not at all Ban, ma'am. It is. It is again a misnomer. Uh, ETO has certain uh, uh, drawbacks, like it has a long time of uh, the uh, uh, waiting period. However, the advantages of ETO is it is cheaper to uh, plasma sterilize it, and it has a very high uh, uh, penetration power. So, therefore, ETO is used. It is. It is not banned at all. Uh, quickly into the next one, which is. Uh... should you have if you have a fixed do you have fixed expiry which is dependent on not dependent on the sterilization process do you have the same for all no. sterilizers no, the steam no, no. the eto etc no expiry of the uh, stored item is always uh, depend upon the condition of the wrapper what is been used and the storage condition and uh, and uh, whether the transportation was done uh, 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 properly all those things will uh, will together decide uh, when they are going to uh, when they are going to get expired there is no fixed expiry date for example uh, linens uh, usually uh, uh, the linen packs the expiry usually uh, we take is around 4 to 5 days medical grade paper if it is used we take for 15 days non oven uh, packing material we take around 3 uh, months so it it all depends upon the type of a uh, uh, material what is been used fine one last question uh, this is on sterilization of instruments which have been used on hiv or H uh, hepatitis b positive patients do they need any special attention if so uh, what this is again wow, one of the commonest myth what has been followed they say uh, most of the healthcare workers they get uh, tens when they have a hiv or hpv infected uh, surgery done they want this uh, equipment uh, the surgical equipment to be treated special answer is no there is no need to treat hiv or hpv infected uh, surgeries uh, those equipment to be uh, treated uh, specially because they are enveloped viruses and uh, enveloped uh, viruses will easily get killed by any of the disinfectant the so also the sars cov2 because uh, covid 19 the same thing is going on the csd staff they are scared to process the uh, 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 the covid infected equipment but again they these are enveloped viruses very very easily they will get killed with with that i think we uh, we've done with some 10 myths we had few more myths to bust we will take it up as a as an exclusive session with you dr uh, apoor thank you thank you so very much for taking time